uh, it is time to move into the Nova Mind presentation uh, with uh, Yaron Conforti, their CEO. And let's get back to talking about these companies specifically and what they themselves are doing um, and how they're working uh, on, on this topic. So as soon as we get your own slides up, I'll bring them up on the screen for you and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep going on that. But if you're not going to hit the like button after that, then I don't know what to, what to tell you, honestly. I really don't. Um, I mean, that, I, that was great. I mean, how often do you get four executives from four, four public companies talking about this issue? Um, again, there's kind of been the theme of the morning on, on this track, at least, uh, was uh, what, what we're calling emerging therapies. Um, and yeah, it's going to take some time to get there, but we're on the path, right? <laughs> so that's, that, that, that's better than being not on the path. Uh, so go ahead, uh, your own, and if you can bring up your slides. Yep. Can you see that now? Uh, nope. Can you click the, if you click the share button in the middle sure. there Did and indeed. share screen and then find your slides within that, uh, when I see them, I will bring them up. There we go. Uh, excellent. I do see that now. Perfect. Look at that. Right. Yeah, there we go. Can you just click hide? On the thing, the little pop up there. Great. All right, I'm gonna hop backstage here. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. So I hope uh, again, thanks for for the compliments. By the way, on that panel, I enjoyed it. I hope anybody that was watching that panel uh, did as well. And I, I suppose that would be a good segue into the presentation that I'm giving to introduce some people to Nova Mind, those that don't know us yet, to inform others that know about us. Uh, so we'll get right into it. This is a snapshot of, of our company and, and the presentation in some ways. Uh, I'm going to describe the businesses that we're operating now. We are a quickly growing network of psychiatry clinics and research sites. So we've been specialized in uh, ketamine assisted psychotherapy for many years now. The clinics have been operating since 2016. Uh, in 2020, we had 20,000 visits to our clinics. And in 2021, we're anticipating 65,000 visits to our clinic. So it's a significant year over year increase. We're expecting that trajectory to continue. And I'm gonna be talking a bit about how we're, we're scaling up uh, that model that's working very well. Uh, so we are of course preparing as, as talked about in the last presentation in some detail uh, for the expected um, approval, FDA approval and, and availability via prescription of MDMA and psilocybin. And we expect that in a regulated environment, uh, our physical infrastructure will provide uh, some of the leadership uh, necessary to bring those therapies to uh, people at scale. So I'll talk later about our research division, which is the other part of NovaMind. Uh, in addition to our psychiatry clinics, we operate clinical research sites that provide clinical trial services to leading drug developers. And again, we focus and specialize and have a track record in psychedelic medicine. So breaking down, as I've talked about the two components of our business, we've been operating since 2016. Our psychiatry clinics are, are very differentiated from many outpatient mental health or psychiatry clinics that people may know. We offer the full spectrum of psychiatry services. That is, there's multiple modalities um, to, to essentially match uh, clients with the modalities that are appropriate for them. The clinical research side of the business, as I mentioned, facilitates clinical trials, as in the case with providing psychedelic medicines to patients in the clinic, when you're doing clinical trials, it requires specialized infrastructure, specialized trained practitioners, and the processes and, and the protocols to, to complete those trials effectively. So we play an important role there, and I'll talk about some of the work we're doing shortly. This is a visual representation of what we were operating today. So we announced, in fact, today our sixth clinic open in Utah. It's also a research site um, that's in Murray, close to Salt Lake City. Our headquarters is in Toronto. Um, we're expecting to expand into different states in the very near term. And again, this is part of a larger plan to expand across the U.S. with, with a model that's already working quite well. Getting into what I described as our differentiated psychiatry clinics. Um, 
we are really trying to, I mentioned it earlier, the ethos is, is to meet the patients where they are, uh, understanding that there is no one single solution to the mental health crisis and understanding that it's effectively a, a tailored approach, uh, a tailored approach, excuse me, that, that results in the most efficacious outcomes uh, based on the data and based on the people that we're treating. So broken down on this slide, it starts with a diverse population base. I mentioned um, anticipating 65,000 visits to our clinics this year. There's a wide, wide demographic there um, from adolescent to, to geriatric and, and many walks of life in between. The categories of care, the provisions, the services um, that we provide uh, are listed here. There are others, but in, in many cases, I like to remind people that there's many permutations, in some cases, combinations for treatment. Um, so what we've done here is listed out uh, so people get an idea of what these modalities are available and, and what we specialize in. And in some cases, people will start with uh, psychotherapy or medication management, and depending on um, the, the impact of that particular treatment for them, they'll move on to other treatments. So again, our approach is to provide uh, the full spectrum of psychiatric services and to provide specialization when particular modalities match the patient. Uh, the treatment plans that you see on the far right side of the page, again, are, are indicative um, and, and a customized approach is taken for each patient or client. Dealing specifically in the context of psychedelic medicine, so it's clear for everybody who's uh, looking at this presentation and wants to understand what psychedelic medicine is available today. Uh, again, as, as one of the leading uh, operators in the United States, we are uh, adhering very closely to the highest standards of quality of care and, of course, the policy that regulates us. So today we can offer ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. Ketamine is available off-label, as many people know. And Spravato, which is a prescription form of ketamine, we also provide and, in fact, have a lot of experience with, as uh, our CMO, Reed Robison, was <clears throat> an early leader in the clinical trials for Spravato, and he led uh, an important ketamine study in Utah. On the right side of the page, uh, differentiating what we do offer at scale in our clinics today, on the right side, differentiate is what the future looks like. So MDMA is anticipated um, to be the first psychedelic ahead of uh, classic psychedelic or true psychedelic ahead of psilocybin. And there's a, a long pipeline that you know, I'll speak to in terms of clinical research uh, that we're also involved with and look to be involved with in the future that will bring these other compounds to market, hopefully. This next slide is a look at one of our clinics. So you've got a picture on the left there. And again, pointing out that uh, with over 7,000 ketamine, ketamine therapy treatments, uh, as well as approaching 5,000 doses of Spravato, we are uh, very much leaders in this practice and, and specialized in these alternative mental health modalities. Uh, and the clinics uh, and, and the, the business model that goes with the clinics, uh, as can be seen by our, our recent quarterly earnings reports uh, is growing and worked very, very well. So we do have wait times at all our clinics. Uh, again, today marks the opening of our sixth. We'll have certainly eight by the end of the year and, and we'll likely expand out of state by the end of the year as well. To, to focus a little more in, focus more on the clinics themselves and um, how they operate, uh, the clients, you know, it's a revenue mix on the right side that gives people an indication of how these treatments are funded. And we're operating in an environment where um, the ability to have the payer contracts that we do uh, to be in, in network, uh, which effectively makes you a, a preferred provider with, with much more predictable rates um, and relationships with the payers is an enormous advantage to us. We, in fact, um, built a, a call center and client care center dedicated in part to facilitating uh, the insurance reimbursements. And in, my, in, in many cases, there's other uh, aspects of our infrastructure that help both the patients uh, and ourselves. So we advocate um, for improved payer contracts, and we were able to do that because we're operating at scale. So it's, it's a, a slide to give people some insight into how these uh, treatments are reimbursed in some cases. Uh, the government uh, line on the right uh, represents Medicare and Medicaid and in some cases state level plans and um, self-pay is, is generally cash pay people paying out of their own pocket. 
This slide is an exciting one for me to talk about. I'll, I'll, I'll do so briefly. We're planning a November launch for our Park City Clinic. Uh, Park City, Utah is a, a world-renowned destination. It's a beautiful place to be, and we're developing a clinic that has uh, a very particular uh, footprint to it in that it allows to facilitate group psychedelic therapies among other innovative treatments. So it's very well understood in psychedelic medicine that the set and setting um, can have a significant impact on outcomes. And so with this Park City retreat, um, it's it's effectively a, a clinic with retreat capabilities, excuse me, we'll be taking those capabilities from the clinic and optimizing them in a different set and setting. I'm going to move now to talking about our research capabilities. Um, as I mentioned previously, we operate a clinical research, uh, contract research organization composed of what stands today is three clinical research sites, and those that network of clinical research sites is growing. So um, here, you know, good visual representation are the services we offer to drug developers, in some cases private sector, in some cases not-for-profit, in some cases academic institutions. We serve all those clients and have a history of serving them. Everything from clinical trial design, patient recruitment, managing the screening and enrollment, and ultimately reporting the patient data and helping these drug developers advance their clinical trials. So it's a full, self, full service psychedelic medicine contract research organization. Uh, we're we have the ability to provide that full spectrum of services and we have the staff and the experience to do it. Uh, below, I'll, I'll leave people to read some of the details of the ser services we offer. And I'll mention uh, and show you on the next slide that, again, that, that expertise, the track record for our clinical research capability is evidenced by the partners we've served. So I mentioned that we were involved uh, through Dr. Reed Robison, our CMO in the clinical trials for Spravato. Uh, as well, we're doing work now with the Ketamine Research Foundation focused on palliative care. We recently announced um, a trial with Karuna Therapeutics, which is focused on schizophrenia and on binomics as well, you'll see listed there that has a PTSD therapy. So I'd encourage people to look at our news releases if they want some more details. Uh, we've announced um, all, all the clinical trials that we have now, we have eight going, and we expect to be announcing more in the near future. It's an exciting part of our business, and uh, certainly our, our partners uh, in terms of drug developers see a lot of value and are, are benefiting a great deal from that large uh, and diverse patient population that we have access to through our clinics. I've mentioned some of this, uh, including the pivotal study uh, that resulted in the approval of Spravato, uh, and as well as some of the high level uh, names, including the Merck phase two uh, clinical trial focused on TRD. So to be clear, uh, we operate in the CNS space, central nervous systems, uh, as well as specializing in psychedelic medicine. And we tend to get involved in the mental health therapeutics that are ultimately going to help our patients and clients. I'll talk a moment about psychedelic therapy protocols, um, something that's not, not always well understood. First of all, defining what is a psychedelic therapy protocol. So on this slide, we've, we've taken some time to explain that these are evidence-based psychotherapeutic interventions. Uh, so when you add the uh, evidence base and the data that we're informed by, in our case um, with ketamine, for example, we are able to optimize our own procedures, our own SOPs for screening, preparation, dosing, and integration. And if you're able to do that while focusing on, in many cases, uh, underserved indications, and again, even in the case of ketamine using existing legal molecules, you can start optimizing and creating protocols focused on indications, things like palliative care, things like eating disorders, or things that we are actively working on. And combining those therapies, uh, the protocols, which, which again, therapeutic interventions that are curated for the indication with the molecules themselves, lets us treat people in real time currently, um, where again, in many cases, there's few or no alternatives available for people suffering uh, in those particular categories of indications. Uh, there's a couple examples on this slide that I won't go into detail, but I encourage people to look it up. Uh, frontline KAP is something we've designed focused on frontline healthcare workers, obviously a, a underserved 
and highly affected group in the pandemic environment in particular, and as well as um, motion focused and group ketamine assisted therapy, which can be applied uh, across multiple indications. Our leadership team, um, I'm, I'm really proud to talk about this. Of course, my partners in business, uh, Reed Robison, I've mentioned a few times, is the founder of our, our network of psych psychiatry clinics and our clinical research organization. Paul Thielking and Pierre Boumansour, um, with their respective domain expertise, join me in the senior management team. And what we have is a, a group that, that really has, again, uh, the ability to bring their own domain expertise uh, and the fit uh, and, and the contribution from each of us resulting in, in the early success of Nova Mind is evident. So we're, we're supported by a great team under us and, and can't put everybody's picture from the organization on this page, but um, you have some, some view into the backgrounds of the leadership and as well, this team is growing. Our board uh, on this slide and as well, our scientific advisory board, um, Again, I won't go into great detail about any particular person, but the model has been that um, we, we seek to partner with people at the board level and at the executive level who have their own domain expertise, who can bring that to the organization, and that we can, we can effectively leverage that in bringing this model of care and delivery forward. A look at, uh, at the the group of companies that we're often compared with, it's not comprehensive, but we've uh, made a point of uh, showing graphically our revenue momentum compared to some of uh, the other companies in our field. Uh, we again continue to lead in terms of our ability to scale our platform. Last quarter, we reported close to $2 million uh, in the quarter, and we will be reporting our year end financials uh, in October, um, because our year end in fact falls in the middle of the year. So the chart's been adjusted uh, to, to, to match the particular company's fiscal year ends with the calendar year end. And you can see obviously uh, that we're growing. You can see the direction the momentum is heading in and we expect that to continue. Quick look at our stock. We began trading publicly in January of this year. Uh, prior to that, we were a private company and financed privately um, throughout our development. Until going public, we recently were included in the advisor share psychedelics ETF, which we're happy about, um, received our DTC eligibility and OTCQX listed, so much easier uh, to trade our shares in the States than it was previously. And with that, we'll be doing uh, much more marketing and, and awareness around our company and our financial performance so that U.S. investors uh, stay stay aware and, and hopefully get involved. Finally, uh, a summary of the presentation and our company, uh, reminding people again that we've been operating these clinics since 2016, as well as the clinical research sites. There's a very, very strong management team in place that has a track record uh, already for scaling this organization and previous ones. Uh, we're aggressively expanding. We announced our sixth clinic today, two more uh, certainly by end of year, and in fact, expecting to expand out of state by end of year as well. And uh, finally, reminding people 65,000 visits to our clinics in this calendar year is our expectation. So certainly showing leadership in the people that we're treating and helping, and ultimately, this is our goal. So thanks everybody for taking the time. I'll be happy, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Yaron. Uh, Unfortunately, we are out of time for questions. We've got up against the clock. We have our next speaker here, but Yaron Conforti, CEO of Novamine. There it is on the screen, the URL, the ticker, trades on the OTCQB market. Yaron, thanks for spending uh, a good chunk of time today on the Benzinga Small Cap Healthcare Conference. Thanks for having me.